It is a piece of pale ivory linen with various slightly darker markings. Is it really the image of Jesus Christ moments after his crucifixion, as many believe? Are the stains really his blood? Well-publicized carbon dating tests say no. Rather, that this 14-foot length of cloth is a very clever medieval forgery. But recent information has raised serious doubts about the accuracy of the carbon dating. Scientists are again pressing their attention to the old question. Is this an image of the crucified Jesus? Since the 1400s, the shroud has been taken out of its silver box many times, draped over balconies for royal weddings, and stared at in wonder by countless pilgrims. The shroud first appeared in Europe in 1355. It was well known during the worst years of the Black Death, when huge crowds stood in line to see it, when Gutenberg perfected the printing press, and when Columbus discovered America. In an age short on scientific tools, in which forgeries were commonplace, the question of the shroud's authenticity could not really be resolved. The public generally assumed the shroud was authentic, but the debate between science and religion was just getting underway. In 1898, the church permitted examination of the cloth by the impersonal eye of a rather new invention, the camera. No one could have expected that the photograph Segundo Pia took that day would change forever the way people saw the shroud. For as the photographer's glass plate emerged from the developing solution, he saw a face, a distinct clear face, unlike anything ever seen before on the shroud. He understood at once that the shadowy image on the cloth had been a negative, and that he was now looking at a positive, He held in his hands an image that would launch a century of scientific investigation. A hundred years after that first photograph was taken, the city of Turin prepares for another public display of the cloth. In that time, it has become the most studied artifact in human history. A new high-tech home is being prepared for the shroud. A hermetically sealed case of aluminum and glass from which the air is pumped out and the inert gas argon pumped in. When the shroud is placed in here, it will never be rolled up or casually handled again. All this activity may seem surprising if the carbon dating tests are correct, that the shroud is a fake. Is it blind faith or is there reason to doubt the scientific findings? The shroud is again the center of controversy. At an unmarked side entrance, restricted access enforced by guards, Unseen by the public and documented only by a single camera, a Swiss textile expert carefully stitches it to a new backing cloth, inch by inch. 
for the curator of the shroud, there is no question about who it is this cloth once covered. This image represents a man who died from the torture of crucifixion. On the Shroud of Turin, there are three types of markings. The most obvious marks are scorches from a fire that almost destroyed the Shroud in the Middle Ages. Then there is the anatomically correct image of a man, front view and back. And third, what appear to be bloodstains. The bloodstains match biblical descriptions about the torture and crucifixion of Jesus. The beating, the crown of thorns, the spear wound. But is the blood really blood? And how did the image get onto the cloth in the first place? The persistent mystery surrounding these questions has challenged scientists for generations. Students at this college in Glendale, California, get a special glimpse into the ongoing debate about the shroud. Their professor, Angelo Montante, uses the shroud as a teaching tool. This is one of the most amazing cultural uh, artifacts that we find in the history of Western civilization. Clues can be drawn out of it that gives us a perspective on the past. The Bible does not give us details dealing with the crucifixion of Jesus of Nazareth. But let me call your attention to the spot right here where there was bloodshed. If classical paintings were correct, he should have been nailed through the palm. But he wasn't. He was nailed through the wrist. And there has to be a reason for that. And we know what the reason is because of some research done by a French physician. In Years ago, a French surgeon experimenting with cadavers was able to determine that the palm cannot maintain the weight of a human being. It has to be through the mesocarpal region of the wrist. Something else is important in this regard. When you nail a person in that area, you press on the median nerve. And when you press on that median nerve, the thumb goes in. And if you'll notice, you do not see thumbs on the figure at all. That's a very accurate kind of thing. How could a forger have possibly known that? Here we have another enhanced image of the shroud. This darkened matter represents blood. Hair, more blood on the arms. And then the whole torso is bleeding. On the side of the torso, near the fifth rib, is an unusual exudation of blood. It matches the shape of the Roman lancia, which was in use at the time of the crucifixion. There is a lot of blood on the shroud, so much so that it makes you wonder at the cruelty of the Romans, that they inflicted such pain on this individual. Cruelty shown on the shroud far exceeds most artistic versions of Christ's passion. Why would a forger have displayed so much more than people expected to see? Short streaks of blood on the back and legs of the man on the shroud baffled researchers for years until it was noticed that they exactly matched the peculiar shape of the first century whip, the flagrum. I'm holding in my hand a replica of a Roman instrument of torture. It's called the flagrum. And at the end of each thong, you find these dumbbells. Notice that there is a space between the two dumbbells. 